Madame Fiela, welcome to our media box. Uh, uh, we know that you are general reporter on ending immigration detention of uh, children. And we know that Parliamentary Assembly has a campaign on ending immigration detention of children. So uh, first, let's start with the aim and, and the role of the campaign. Uh, so what are the messages of the campaign that you would like to give? I think it's very important now uh, to realize how many children left their countries without their parents, without families, without their relatives or friends, arriving somewhere. Might be in Greece, might be in Italy, might be anywhere on the outside Schengen border. After a traumatizing trip, um, maybe on these horror trips by boat, but also really uh, when they tell you what they have all lived and gone through, um, it's uh, beyond our imagination. So now you imagine uh, those youngsters arriving, let's take Greece at, as an example, because I have been in detention centers in Greece, and you see 11-year-old boys together with adult men behind the bars in a detention center, I leave it to your imagination and fantasy to think what can happen in a detention center and how much a child can be traumatized, not only for the moment being, but for his whole life. And also this can lead this anxiety, depression and this fear of all that has uh, been happening to this child can lead to a lot of violence and that we should prevent. And what are your recommendations, maybe general recommendations that we need to discuss in the Parliamentary Assembly to tackle with the immigration issue, especially from the child perspective? I think first of all, when a child arrives, it's very important that it is regarded as a child and not regarded as a person who arrived maybe without a passport mm -hmm. and is treated exactly like an adult. I think this is the very first and most important message that we must find different ways to treat the future of a child who is uh, without the parents and arrived after a horror trip from wherever, from Syria, uh, from uh, countries uh, having lived in war, countries, etc., etc. So the first thing is to really prohibit and preclude child immigration detention in law. Uh, we try uh, to really uh, make clear to our member states that they should try to change the laws in their countries. Then ensure that children are treated first and foremost as children. Their best interest is the primary concern and takes precedence of considerations relating to their immigration status when a state takes action. This is the second point and maybe the most important. Now we come to the third point. And I think this is very important that we promote and adopt alternatives to detention that enable children and families to live in non-custodial, community-based context while their immigration status is being resolved. Now, we have fantastic examples of countries that already do that and realize that. I can give you uh, the example of France. I was in a center for young people, for children uh, who have arrived without their parents, so non-accompanied minors. Uh, they have been in a center close to Charles de Gaulle Airport. And there, first of all, they try uh, to learn a minimum of the French language to be integrated in a class and then they give them education, school education, but also, of course, there are psychologists, and they follow their way, not only until the age of 16, but much further, they try to give them apprenticeship or studies, and when they are adult, they really have a fantastic, uh, fantastic possibility, even if freedom might have uh, come in their own uh, home countries to go back and really uh, have gone through education in a fantastic way. They try very hard in France. Of course, this is a very costful way, but I think it's a very good example. And uh, some of other examples, maybe bad examples we have? 
Yes, I have been uh, visiting detention centers in Greece. Uh, I have seen terrible things. Uh, unaccompanied minors, 11-year-old boys who were detained together with adult men in a detention center in Athens. Behind the bar, they were standing with those adult men. And I would like to leave it to your own fantasy what can happen when adult men stay together with young boys. It's really uh, frightening and uh, quite traumatizing to see that. And of course, one knows that the impact on a child that has lived in detention centers, even if it's only a short uh, time, a period of time, it has really a long-lasting impact. Uh, children very often uh, get totally depressed. A lot of anxiety is following them, and this can lead also to violence. So if we think uh, of the own security also uh, of the future of our countries, we must think that anxiety, depression, bad treatment, and traumatizing moments in your very young life will last forever and can lead uh, to depression, to violence, and even uh, many uh, young people try to kill themselves. This is really very bad what I have seen. And uh, I must say it's very important that we leave solidarity to the uh, Schengen outside border countries like Greece because they are overwhelmed with those arrivals and no country would be able uh, to cope with all these channel challenges. Maybe it's also good to note that today's children are going to be tomorrow's uh, future men, women, so adults. So it's important to focus Absolutely. especially on children when we uh, treat the migration issue. Thank Absolutely. you for joining us, Madame Thank you. Thank you very much.